Has this ever happened to you? You spent countless hours working on a polymer clay statue. Maybe you've watched a 10 part YouTube series on it. And then one day you just accidentally kind of oh, drop it. Well, now I have a solution for you. And welcome, my name's Josh Foreman. Welcome to another episode of Did You Know About That Art Thingy? In today's episode, we talk about this art thingy, cost clay, and how it can help you make sculptures that are practically indestructible. I, I, within reason. You know, you probably don't actually want to throw them on the ground, but, you know. Let me show you an example. See this sculpture right here? This is a, a portrait of my sons when they were little wee lads and uh, the fantasy adventures I, I, you know, would like to fantasize about them having together. And um, so my oldest son here, he's pointing with a little, a little polymer clay finger. Do you want to know how many times I have super glued that finger back on his hand because I've accidentally bumped this statue while cleaning or organizing? The answer is too many times. Too many. So because of that experience and countless others, there are just certain things that I've never tried to do with polymer clay because I knew it was pointless, that the thing would just break, shatter, crack, whatever. But I figured, hey, now that this stuff is around, let's give it a go. Let's see how far we can push our creativity without having to worry about the durability of the finished sculpture. So what I did was I took an old piece that had been sitting on my shelf half done for countless years dusted it off and decided to see see where I can go. Just let my imagination go. And uh, here's how it went. Uh, I'm being inspired by strawberries simply because I've been working on this creature. Now that I have some cost clay, I figured this guy is a good chance to try out some stuff because cost clay didn't exist when I started designing this guy. So let's talk about cost clay. Uh, I was a kick starter backer of this stuff. Yeah, it is just like in my uh, Sculpey 101 series. This, uh, it's polymer clay, you bake it in the oven. Uh, but the big difference is that it is flexible after it's baked. So let me show you an example of some very quick tests that I did. So just to get a sense for how it uh, how it sculpted and how flexible it actually is, I made these just tentacles, and uh, you can see I baked them around wire, and so these are fully baked, so they don't get squashed or broken um, when you're manipulating them, and uh, yeah, you can see this part doesn't have the wire in it, and it is super bendy and flexible. Um, and this one, I'm not sure where the wire ends, but, uh, yeah, the, obviously the thicker it is, the, the more, uh, your wire is going to need to be very strong in order to let you pose it, if posing is something you care about. But posing isn't necessarily what this is for. This is mostly for when you just, you know, are moving it around and you bump it against something. And look at that, it doesn't, it doesn't snap. I'm gonna give this a try and really like start doing an actual project with it. I'm gonna use uh, this number 12 uh, beige, warm beige, just because it's fairly close to what I've got going on here. I'm gonna be painting him because I want him to be, you know, a strawberry monster. And this body that I have in here is it's quite placeholder. <laughs> um, so I can I could do whatever I want with that. So another thing I wanted to point out is that this head has been baked, but um, because I've got these glass eyes in here and this the skin around them was really thin, I have these little cracks around the eyes. So I'm gonna fill those in. I'm gonna be doing quite a bit of uh, plastering over this guy with the cost clay just to get a sense for how it works out. Gonna clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol. It's clobbering time. 
And just for full testing sake, I ran this piece through the pasta roller and um, you know what, that actually, I guess I would recommend pasta roller instead of the never need for this stuff because it's, um, yeah, it's a lot easier to work with now. And it's a lot closer to the kind of stuff I'm going to be doing on this sculpt, which is these fine little thin leaves and, and vines and stuff. So but the first thing I'm going to try real quick is just see how this works as a crack filler. Since the crack is already where there's a bunch of little folds and wrinkles, um, this is a, a very mild test, not, not very challenging, but we'll see if it gives us any insight into the properties of the material. One thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that it's sticking to my tool more than other polymer clay does, which makes me think, uh, let's, let's see what alcohol does on it. And refer to my Sculpey 101 series if you want to learn more about how alcohol can work for smoothing your um, polymer clay. I wonder if just kind of dipping my tool in the alcohol from time to time is a good way to uh, ameliorate the effects of stickiness. Um, let's give this guy a little strawberry cap, shall we? He needs a little, a little uh, strawberry cap hat, kind of like this is what I'm thinking. Little, little spiky doodles. Um, I could put on a blob like this and then like sculpt in all the little a little spikies, or I could make a set of spikies and pin them down. I think I'm going to go for that option. Going to really be pushing the uh, how thin I'm squashing this material because I want to. I just want to see like how how far is too far. We're going to find out. So another thing I think I'm going to try, just see how these products work in conjunction. Clear liquid polyclay, which kind of works like a glue. So this a little flappy doodle here. Uh, could potentially cause problems if this was traditional polymer clay because you know if I put his head in there and baked it and this got tilted it would probably snap his little his little petal hair but uh, I have I have faith that because this is flexible it's gonna be just fine for his little arms I'm going to try this floral wire and I'm just gonna wrap the clay around it Give it a little bit of a twist so that it's easier to attach the clay to. You guys want to see a fun trick? Watch this. Take my end here. Look at that. Insti wrap. I feel like he's reaching out to say, Mama! Mama! <sighs> That's the story I'm telling myself. And I just take them and go squash. But here's my thinking. Tell me if you if you think this is crazy. If I bake it like 
this, then in theory, he'll be reaching up and out of his can, which is the look that I wanted. And then we'll see how much gravity pulls him back down. Heavy duty. Let's give this a try. All right, here we go, back from the oven. So, I made a mistake. Uh, I forgot that I had actually put a clear coat on the teeth, and so while the clear coat is still there, um, I got a massive plume of smoke filling my kitchen and into the living room, uh, which was no good because there's also been forest fires around here which have given us uh, pretty majorly bad air. So I, I made the air even more toxic inside and we had to open the doors and windows. So uh, pro tip, do not bake your clear coated uh, stuff. Also, when he was sitting on his little platform here, uh, the, the foil crushed into his chin a little bit, so he's got some, some little impressions there. You know, I got some, some scorch marks here. So I must have baked this a little higher than I should have. I'm trying to remember. So the cost clay wants 275. Oh, right. Um, other polymer clay is closer to the 230 range. Wrong, 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 wrong. Let's look at our little um, dangly bits here. They seem pretty, pretty awesomely flexible. Nothing has snapped or broken. Now, the I can see that I did not put enough. Uh, wire in there to, to hold it in place. I can, you know, kind of pose it a little bit, but really gravity is doing <laughs> most of the most of the moving here. If I if I want to pose it in some special way, I would probably at this point um, put a harder wire in there and then just like sculpt some clay over that. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a try for the next step. But I'm also going to try to do the painting on this step as well. And that, ooh, that should be interesting because I was going to paint it with Genesis paints. Let's see what the temp on that is. Uh-oh, I only see it in Celsius. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> it's like a clue in a murder mystery. It's just enough information to see. Uh, 265 Fahrenheit. Okay, perfect. Because this is 270, right? 275, yeah, okay, so well within range. Uh, great. I'll be able to get away with uh, painting it with these uh, Genesis paints, and I have a video about painting with these, my intermediate polymer clay tutorial, so check that out if you want to see more detail on that. Oh, you know what? Uh, now would be a great time to see how sanding works on this as well, because I don't know, since it's flexible, it seems like it wouldn't want to sand as well, but let's find out. So yeah, it does kind of feel like I'm sanding rubber a little bit, which is not the best feeling. Yeah, I mean, that's that's perfectly fine. It takes a little bit longer to sand than uh, regular polymer clay takes. But, but not significantly enough where I would, you know, ding it for that. No, oh, here's another chance to test something. Let's see how it drills. Yeah, it still feels weird. It does feel like I'm drilling into rubber, but I mean, it seems to work fine. So again, no real complaint, except that it just feels funny. I want to emphasize I'm only doing this because I didn't put a thick enough wire in here to pose it. So this is not a knock against the material. It's just me, you know, I'm, I'm new to it. So I'm learning as I go. I didn't like the way the wire was looking on the bare arm there. I just, I'm not confident that once painted, it's 
not gonna still look like just metal wire wrapped around there. So I've been experimenting with just covering it. And while this doesn't look great right now, I think after I put the peach fuzz on there, it'll look fine. Because this stuff never dries, I just take the paint brushes that I've used before and uh, wrap them up. Okay, so here's, here's my red paintbrush. And because this is also polymer, um, I can get it as thick as I want, no problem. It all bakes out in the end. And I'm painting right on top of the unbaked clay. So I'm not uh, pressing super hard, but even if I was, I mean, this, this brush is pretty soft, so I don't think I'm gonna mess up any fabulous sculpting that I did here. Not, not that any of this sculpting is really fabulous on this first little kind of test run of the material, but uh, yeah, even so, I wouldn't be afraid to paint on the, on the uncured clay. Okay, one thing that just now occurred to me as I'm painting, I started down low and I'm painting up towards the tips where it's more and more flimsy and floppy, which just makes it harder and harder to paint on. So, uh, in the future, pro tip, start at the tips and work your way down to the base. Because now if I grab around here, I'm going to be getting paint all over my fingers, which then leads to paint all over everything, magically my face, the car, probably, probably somewhere on the moon. Now, if I was smart, I would have, before I started painting at all, I would have drilled a, a hole back here and like been able to just like move it around on a stick. But I was not that smart, alas. And let's see how this worked out. So I baked this in my toaster oven and my toaster oven is not large enough, so I had to kind of squish his arms together more than I wanted, and some of these leaves got squashed as well. You can see some areas where they're kind of starting, starting to break apart a little bit. Oh, and these got glued together from the paint. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very ugly right now. Just like, you know, it's just lumpy and disproportionate and looks bad. But that's not the material's fault. That is just because I'm doing a test very quickly and I'm hoping that the fuzzy fur and the dripping and drops and all that kind of stuff will, will compensate for that. Uh, but we'll find out. I hit a point where I decided, you know what, I'm just not happy with this. Uh, this often happens when you're working with new materials. It should happen when you're working with new materials. So keep this in mind. Totally expected. Um, yeah, so I'm it just it's it's lumpy, it's bumpy, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like vines, it doesn't look like a creature's anatomy, it's just kind of gross lumps. And uh, you know what? I can do better. So um so I started doing some experiments, and oh, by the way, this is this is the uh, fuzzy grass stuff that you can get for dioramas that I applied. I do like the fuzz, and I'm definitely going to do that on the next version. But uh, let's look at some of these leaves that I redid. So I'm going to show you how I made these guys next. Um, yeah, so let's just let's just dive right into that. So the first thing I did, which was an interesting experiment and turned out way better than I thought is I mixed um, Genesis paint into the uh, the whatever this color of uh, cos clay is and it turns out that when you do that it it doesn't you know it'll come off a little bit on your hands 
but not much at all and it keeps its flexibility really well after baking so hey pro tip if you don't have the colors that you need also I should note that if I were gonna do this a lot I would just buy the colors that I wanted to begin with but this is a this is a great alternative to doing that I start with a flat ish uh, you know I put this through a pasta roller and then I just cut out a leaf ish shape So this is parchment paper that I've just taken and I crinkle it up. And then lay my leaf down, sandwich it in there. And that way, as I'm doing my squashing and sculpting on it, as long as it's sandwiched between here, you can always peel it off and this little wrinkled texture just helps with the leafiness of it. Um, and so in this case, because I want it fairly poseable, I press the, uh, the wire into it. Referring to my reference, I'm doing these kind of uh, jaggedy edges here. Now that I have the, the shape in there, I'm just going in and really aggressively flattening out those edges to get that very natural flat-ish leaf. You know, I'm not so concerned about how thick it is in the middle, but definitely on the edges, that's where you're gonna perceive the thickness the most. And then, while I've got this material on it, I'm pressing into it and the the parchment paper is going to um, soften the lines, so I'm pressing pretty hard to kind of get that impression. Again, always looking at reference, I'm trying to get these kind of divots that go out to the, um, the little fringes. And when you're doing it against the back of your, your fingers as opposed to a hard surface, you're gonna be preserving, you're, you're distorting it, but you're also preserving the backside. Now you don't actually have to remove this from the parchment paper. You could bake it on the parchment pa paper. Um, but one thing that I did was um, I applied the paint before I baked it, which you could go either way. You could bake it first and then do the paint, but I prefer to save a step if I can. Now in this case, I ended up with this big tear here, and I'm guessing it's because when I folded it, um, maybe I got a, a little too aggressive with pushing it past where the wire is in the middle. But yeah, you can see how paper thin the edges are, which allows you to get really nice natural effects just by kind of bending it around. And I'll do more of that after after I apply the, uh, the paint job to it. So. so I've been experimenting as I'm working with this new material to try to find the best way to get this leaf texture that I'm going for. But because this tutorial is not about making foliage, leaves and flowers and stuff. I'm not really sweating it, um, but I just wanted to point out like some of the techniques I've been trying is, um, you know, I, I roll foil over it. That looks more like, well, it doesn't look like a leaf texture. I tried rolling foil over it while it has parchment paper over and you get a slightly different effect. Um, rolling it over with saran wrap and you get a different effect. I just wanted to point out this experimental process to you guys so you see that it's it's a normal part of developing art and at some point um, I'm sure I will accident my way into finding out the optimal way to get the leaf texture that I'm going for. Uh, but for now we're just gonna call it and I'm gonna show you how I'm going to uh, put the arms together. Here we go. 
So because I initially envisioned this project as just a test out the material, I really didn't think through the design of this creature like at all. I didn't decide are these tentacles or are they articulated skeleton, whether it's an exoskeleton or endoskeleton. So I just did this very crude drawing to get my ideas going to figure out how I wanted to approach it. So I decided on more of a stick bug thing. I'm envisioning this guy as like a creature that lives in strawberry patches. So he's evolved uh, camouflage for that. So to that extent, I can just make uh, kind of insectile arms and attach these little leafy bits. It uh, It's along the lines of like um, orchid mantises like these. And so I'm not married to the structure of a strawberry plant that always has three leaves and these little buds, etc, etc. And I'm going to be layering all these wires into it as well. I'm trying to figure out how to wind these together as tightly as possible. Now, because the clay is so flexible, man, it's, it's so nice to not have to worry about breaking the leaves. I could actually bend the leaves because they've got the wire all the way through however I need them. I'm going to see what happens when I use a little bit of super glue to tack the um, clay to the wire armature. I This is something that I do with regular polymer clay all the time and I assume it will be fine with this uh, cost clay but we're gonna find out. The downside to doing this is if you're using a very thin amount of clay over your armature the glue is going to seep out and then you're gonna end up with chunks so something I, I hadn't thought of until just now, but uh, yeah, I'm, I may avoid this for the rest. I want to show you the best method that I've discovered so far for getting thin little tentacle things. So I take a very little bit of super glue. Don't need a lot, just enough to kind of fill in those little gaps between uh, the wire twists. Okay, and then I'm using a hobby knife, you could use a sculpting tool, whatever. The point is that I'm pushing it into the clay um, without touching my finger to it. Now I'm not pushing it all the way through, so, you know, so it comes out the other side. Just enough so that I can take it and pinch it together like so. And that keeps all of that super glue inside and it's not like squeezing out as much. You know, it still depends on uh, having a light touch and getting just the right amount in there, but um, I'm a lot closer to what I'm going for now. And so now that it's anchored to the metal inside, you have a lot more freedom to kind of smooth the clay back and forth over the wire without it peeling off in awkward ways. Okay, so what I've discovered is that sanding with 
just a piece of sandpaper like this is kind of frustrating because of how rubbery and bendy things are. But using a sandpaper that's on something stiff, like one of these uh, nail boards, um, goes a lot faster and easier. And what's cool is when I'm sanding something curvy like this, uh, in the past there would be a problem where I'd have to be very careful to sand just like that, otherwise it could snap off. But because it's bendy, I can just... So another thing I'm gonna be seeing is how well does uh, multi-baking work with this, multi-stage baking. So I'm going to be adding some clay, blending it in, rebaking, and seeing how it works. So this is a little trick that I'm doing to try to preserve the general shape, the tubularosity of the arms, because I don't want this wonky, wobbly wire look for the uh, arms. So I just covered them with what I had left of the regular colored uh, cos clay. Since I have this color already mixed up and it matches the leaves and everything, I wanted to preserve that. So now in theory, I can just coat the, uh, the arms with this thinner strip and not have to worry about filling in all the gaps. So I'm down to just this much of my cost clay left, and I'm thinking, uh, let's see, I still need to anchor the arms onto the body. And I do have more cost clay, a, you know, gray cost clay that I could mix into it, but I'm kind of curious to see what happens if I mix it with something else, like a Super Sculpey Firm. To apply the final paint on this guy, I'm just going to use regular acrylic paints. I've got some, whatever this is, probably Games Workshop or something. No, Citadel color, um, dollar store, you know, acrylic stuff. And I'm using some Citadel shade, thinking that that'll um, get the kind of the pits around the strawberries looking good and deep. So. Here we go. Always starting on the back of the piece. Okay, so I'm gonna make the arms furry, just like the fur you see on the bottom of this strawberry. Okay, next up. Got my little static flocky device machine, which I attached somewhere on my sculpture. And then turn it on and that creates an electrical signal that goes out the back onto there. And so when you do your little dashies, now in theory, they will stay all um, upright uh, because the glue has them held in place. So yeah, now it's got a nice little 
strawberry strand fuzz on it. Hooray. So I'm doing an experiment to see which of these different epoxies I want to use for the liquid effects that are gonna be coming out of the can. This is the winner for now. So I super glued this little piece of transparent thread onto his mouth and I'm just uh, encouraging some of this drippy slime effects to come down so he's got a little drool strand. Uh, you always get bonus points in your creature design if they've got a drool strand in my book. So there we go. This has been really fun. A, a great exercise to just uh, take something old and that I was probably going to throw away someday and do something interesting with it. Uh, it. It's so delightful that now I can just, you know, tweak my sculptures. Um, you know, I can, I can, whoops, it fell down, but it's fine. It gets back up again. You're never going to keep it down. Uh, by the way, this guy's name is Jack. He was named so on our stream. Thanks to End of Ease for that suggestion, I believe. Um, and this has been a, a fun time of hanging out with people uh, on, the, on the Twitch. You should, you should check out the Twitch. It's really fun, you guys. Um, and yeah, don't forget to do all the socials as well. Uh, thank you to my patrons. Uh, come check out my discord share your art on the discord It's a very positive community where everyone encourages each other and there's great tips and advice there uh, All those links down below. So check that stuff out uh, cosplay Final review. It's great uh, 63 cans of diet Pepsi jazz out of uh, 87 coke zeros is my rating uh, you know, I don't love working with it in the same way that I love working with Super Sculpey Firm. It's a little more on the gummy side than I prefer. However, the trade-offs are so significant. In the applications where it is best suited, thin, skinny, floppy, long, all those kind of things, uh, fantastic. I anticipate I'll be using this a lot more in the future. So look forward to that as, uh, you know, and I'll be continuing to give out new tips as I learn the material better. Um, so yeah, stick around for that. Thanks so much. Thanks again to all my patrons, my beautiful patrons, and uh, we'll see you next time. And one last thing I wanted to add, no arts were harmed in the making of this video. See, this, this guy that was smashed, it was a stunt double. All right, so the, the original, he's still fine. All together, our Sculpey 101 buddy, is uh, it is forever. For, uh, he'll be in a museum someday. Indiana Jones will punch a Nazi and say, it belongs in a museum. That's, that's how great this and permanent this piece is for all times. All times. <laughs>